Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Xavier presented a new version of an old favorite PHP malware with PHP being installed on many Linux systems and also some Windows systems and vulnerable PHP sites, of course, being a common issue in exposed web servers, PHP has never really gone away as a platform to create malware, in particular to attack these type of servers. But the malware found typically isn't as exciting as new malware families written in PowerShell and JavaScript and uh, well, uh, maybe even Python. Xavier found this example on Pastebin. The example he found has a couple of interesting features. It appears to be targeting WordPress sites. So again, there is your PHP link. And not only has a blacklist of IP addresses, it won't attack because for example, they appear to be owned by security companies. That's something you see very often in malware, but it also checks Google's safe browsing API to make sure it doesn't bother to infect a site that is already blacklisted. This is likely a very common problem for this type of malware because particularly these WordPress uh, scans, they're ubiquitous. It's by far the top sort of scan I'm seeing against uh, web servers. So if someone comes across a vulnerable web server, well, it is a good chance it already has been infected and as a result may already be blacklisted. And by the way, talking about web application vulnerabilities, Drupal released an update to fix an authentication bypass vulnerability in version 8.7.4. This vulnerability is only exposed if the experimental workspaces module is installed. Read the update instructions. You also have to flush caches to really make this effective. And yes, you should be running 8.7.5 after you installed the update. Not sure what happened to you if you are not actively in the process of moving data into the cloud. In particular, for small companies, cloud services can be more secure as these companies often do not have the resources to properly secure critical software, like uh, for example, accounting software. But uh, this strategy can fail, of course, if the cloud service provider itself isn't taking the necessary steps to protect the data. Last week, iNSync, a provider of cloud-based software solutions, fell victim to ransomware. So we're not really talking about sort of your Amazon cloud style software, where you still are mostly responsible for managing systems, but they're basically providing software as a service like accounting service. In this particular case, they also provide a cloud-based QuickBooks sort of synchronization solution. But last week, INSync fell victim to a ransomware. Now, INSync did immediately shut down their services. Probably a good thing because that may have helped prevent additional damage caused by the ransomware. They do say that they have backups, but the problem they're running into now is that they are afraid to actually access the backups. So they don't want to have these backups being encrypted as well. They first want to make sure that the ransomware is removed from their systems, which is probably the right thing to do in this case. But of course, their clients are now without access to their accounting data. When you sign up for cloud providers, then always check as good as you can what they're doing for security. Of course, that may be difficult again for smaller companies. I think has a very prominent statement on their website touting sort of their security expertise or their enterprise level security, I think, as they call it with a little bit some specifics as to like how they are selecting their own cloud services 
providers. But in particular, for critical data like accounting data, you probably should always keep a local backup. Not sure with this particular synchronization solution, how much uh, the actual users that access the data have local copies of it. Possible that they do have a reasonable, good and up-to-date local copy of the data. So if you're affected by something like this, immediately save that data. And if ever a cloud services provider tells you that you cannot easily make a backup of your data, then please run, run fast, because that could also lead you to being locked in to this particular cloud services provider. It tends to be uh, with complex data sets like this, always uh, difficult to move, uh, for example, from software versions or uh, to different providers, but still you wanna have the ability to access and backup your own data data and not have it held hostage by the cloud service provider. I guess that's sort of a different way of ransomware. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.